Welcome, 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 welcome to New Being Queen Talk Show. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Y'all know I, I'm always excited when I have my guests on here. So, but I, I, the reason why I'm really, really excited is because we have a Nigerian Canadian film producer tonight. Come on. Her name is Chibi Lewis Okoye. I'm so, 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 so excited to be asking her all these questions. And y'all know, I think I'm a little actress myself. So, <laughs> I need for you all to do me a favor. I need for you all to start sharing this right now. So when you come into the room, go ahead and start sharing this video. I'm going to start sharing as well. I want to first introduce you all to our guest on tonight. Um, She's a very beautiful a beautiful, lovely queen on uh, tonight. Her name is um, Queen Okoye. She's a Nigerian Canadian film producer on a mission to elevate the untapped content resources of Africa stories. A uh, real world screen institute delegate to CAN, um, TIFF Content London. Content Canada and CMPA Prime Time. She produced the featured film Kofa. Now, this is one we're going to talk about because she's a film producer. So, we got to talk about this movie that she made of uh, Kofa, K O F A, in 2023, which won the best feature film and other awards at the recently concluded Africa International Film Festival, where Black Panther Wakanda Forever also premiered. She was the associate producer for the award winning feature. The Tenant in 2008. Come on. She has been an associate producer on the Planet Africa TV show, the longest running show of its kind in Canada, aired on Omni TV, Rogers TV, and has produced numerous theater and live production, including the annual Excellence Award by Afro, Afro Global Television. As a master's graduate in innovation and entrepreneurship of the Smith School of Business at Queen's University, Chibi is, a, is building a profitable and sustainable film company and aspires to contribute to the closing it's to closing the gap of limited black film business producers globally. At her core, Chibi is passionate about Africa's impact on the world and, and vice versa, exploring social dynamics and how we can leverage intellectualism and empathy to, pro, to improve our society with a background and new technology. She is in the early development of one-of-a-kind African um, futuristic sci-fi drama. This is our queen for today, our queen Chibi Lewis Okoye. This I'm so excited to have her on the show. Y'all know I want y'all to take out this time to share, 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 share this. Before we share, I want to do a quick intro. Y'all know I got to have my intro on here. And um, I want y'all to share. Y'all share this video. Y'all know how I like it. Y'all know I love for us to come on. And we always come on the show. We always share. We always um, talk. We have a conversation. Y'all can ask questions. Find out how y'all can get into one of her videos, one of her movies. I'm just so excited about this because y'all know I think I'm 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 a, uh, I'm an actress. So <laughs> we got to come back uh, in a few minutes. I'll be bringing her up. Y'all hold on one second, okay? back we are live here again to get some information from the filmmaker the producer the queen chibi okoye y'all i'm so excited so i'm gonna go ahead and bring her up y'all make sure that y'all comment ask questions talk to the queen on today ask her questions about the film being a producer all this stuff we want to know we got to get all we can out of her okay so here she comes 
Hey, Queen. Hi, Yolanda. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Listen, oh, you know, I'm sitting up here talking about, oh, I'm messing up her name. Oh, I'm messing up her name, but I, did I say it right? Oh, Koye. You said it right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you said it right. Yes, I love it. I love it because I was like, girl, don't mess up her name. You better not mess up her name. I'm like, you taking me all out of my comfort zone today. So I'm super excited for having you on the show on tonight. This is a, such a blessing. So right now, Okoye, let's talk about the movie. Hello, Queen Mika. Let's talk about the movie Kofa. Yes. Let's get some. Let's, let's talk about the the movie Kofa. How it started? Like, where did we get the the name from and all that good stuff? Okay, so Kofa um, means the door in Hausa. So Hausa is a language that's spoken in uh, in in the sub-Saharan Africa, mostly on the northern coast of most of the countries in West Africa. Uh -huh. So it's it's spoken in Nigeria. So Nigeria is where my heritage, where I'm from, and um, it means the door. And the reason why I named it the door, I actually came up with the name, you know, when I was chatting with uh, my partner who directed and uh, wrote it and mm -hmm. also uh, produced it with me. Um, and we were talking about, at first, the name was just The Door. So uh -huh. it was like, it doesn't have that oomph. You know, mm -hmm. like, we're Nigerians. We're coming out here to get a film made that's going to be shared all around the world. We have to put a little bit of our flavor in there. So that yes. name, they can, it can be a conversation starter. So yes. I, was like, hmm, I wonder what, what the door means in Hausa, because if you watch the film, not to give any, not to make any uh, spoilers, but you can tell why it's a Hausa name that I came up with. And I opened the Hausa dictionary and I'm like, what's the meaning of the door? I'm like, Kofa. I'm like, yeah, that sounds pretty. It's a four letter word. It's uh -huh. easy to pronounce. Um, and I'm like, that's the name. That's the name that's of the name. That's it. Kofa. So yeah. Um, that's where the name came from. And, uh -huh. it, and the reason why the name of the movie itself is The Door is yeah. because um, it's a psychological thriller. That's the uh -huh. genre of the movie. And yeah. it's about eight people who wake up in a room. They don't have most of their clothes on. They just have their uh -huh. underwear on. They don't have any memories. Um, they uh -huh. don't have any cell phones. They don't know what they're doing in the room. And every time in intervals, a man comes into the room and he opens the door to the room. And between him and the people inside, he takes one of them out. And every time he comes back to take somebody else, he's bloodied. He's more bloodied than the last time. So, of course, they're afraid and they're trying oh, to marshal wow. out you know, why are we in this room? Perhaps if we can find a way to overpower this guy or find a way to get out of here, we can cross the door and get past. So the door was kind of like a vault between them and the outside world with this man standing in between them. So that's where the name came from, the door. And it obviously came from the writer, um, Judy Dada. However, the when I when like I said earlier, when we were talking about, you know, what can we use to spice it up? I was like, oh yeah, let's go with Kofa. So yeah, that's long-winded answer, but that's where the name came from. Listen, because it makes you think if you if you're thinking about the about when somebody taking someone out and they coming back with somebody new and he's bloody. What did you do with those people? Are you killing them? What is going on? So yeah. uh, listen, that that right there is exciting just to hear about it. And you, I mean, you produce, you made this movie, you know. But you know, I I want I want to be the um, I want to be the queen of 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 um movies you know I, I think i think i can do a movie i think i can be on on somebody's movie because i think i'm dramatic so <laughs> so um that is that is nice i absolutely love that so let's talk about the journey of creating the movie let's talk about that you know starting it out from the beginning oh wait a minute let's talk about this how did you find your cast Oh, that's actually a question I got asked recently. So the cast were, are predominantly, they're all Nigerians and they're amazing Nigerian actors and actresses doing amazing things back home and even internationally. Right. So um, when we started producing it, because we started in Canada, like, you know, the writing and everything, the writer wrote it in Canada. And then oh. when we were back home, we had to hire a line producer and we had to hire people back home who understood the dynamics of working out 
um, negotiations with our local um, stars. And we also had to uh, um, do a lot of auditions. Um, mm -hmm. I was there for a, lot, a number of the auditions uh -huh. and just being able to find the right people who could carry the roles because yes. the film is very character driven. It's very intense. Yes. Um, you, know, you know, having these people in this room and it's, it, you know, you can imagine there's a lot of confusion. There's uh -huh. a lot of accusations, betrayal, Ooh. and um, trying to find out how did they all get in there. They're pointing fingers at one another. Yes, and so, yes. so there's a lot of, and the dialogue is very strong. And the director Ooh. and writer comes from a theater background. So okay. very big on characters and who yes. can who can sell the role the Ooh. most so doing that you know we had so it was mostly the director who made the final cuts in terms Got of you. who was going to play the roles mm. um, we, had list. we had people and because they were going to be in their underwear we had to make sure they were also comfortable with right. uh, acting in that kind of vulnerable state oh. we had to people who were all about their business, top tier professionals. Got you. Um, Nigeria is a very tough place to even be a creative. You know, sometimes yeah. what, what we've heard about Nollywood, which is the Nigerian movie industry, uh -huh. um, sometimes, you know, for the films that are done back home, some of these people are on multiple productions at once. Right. So yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So we had to make sure that, you know, they could commit um, to the yes. days that we were rehearsing, to the days yes. that we were doing the table reads, to the days that they were shooting. So uh -huh. it was a mix of having the director audition these people directly, us run through and say, is this person strong enough for this role? What Ooh. do you think? And then um, shortchanging it. In fact, we got another, one of the cast, the director had seen her online so many years ago. Um, and she used to do a lot of different accents. She's Ooh. from Nigeria and her name is Gina Castell. And um, she... And then when he, she reached out to him, like, you know, I'm an upcoming actress. I have this talent. And her talent was raw. She is really good. And um, recently in Nigeria, last weekend, we had the African Magic Viewers' Choice Award. It's like the equivalent of the Oscars in Africa. And she was nominated for the Best Supporting Actress based on her role in the movie. And there's another young man. Um, his name is Daniel Etim Effiong. He's a mm -hmm. great actor in Nigeria, one of the handful of great male actors in Nigeria. And he took a lead role. He too was nominated for the best actor in a leading role in a drama or TV series. Granted, you know, um, the awards was last week. It's just, again, like I said, I've said before so many times, it's a testament to the effort and the commitment they put into their characters. Yes. And like staying committed to the role because they sold it. There were people who um, knew them and uh -huh. when they had seen the film, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is Daniel that I know. He really sold the role because he doesn't look like my friend. He really looks right, like right, 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 right. And the character that he played is called Wale in the uh -huh. movie. So uh, they're just amazing actors. There are other actors called Zaina Balogu. There's another actor, Eina Nguigwe. Eina is also um, represented in the U.S. and he's been uh -huh. to um, Hollywood and Hollywood co-pros as well. Um, he was also in Cannes Film Festival with me recently because I just returned from uh, Cannes Film Festival. And uh -huh. these are actors that are out there doing big things. Um, oh, they nice. their career. Um, this film was shot, you know, quite a while ago. So they're growing. And I think it was a good call for most of them. I don't think seeing the movie and being critical of it, I've been able to say, hmm, I think this character was miscast or this character was miscast. No, there's even yeah. another actor, Udoka Oyeka. He's uh -huh. now based in the U.S. He's a Nigerian as well. He was the main guy, Archibong, who kept coming into the room to take them out. So it was yeah. a good character, four men, four women we had to represent. And then, of course, outside of the room, when they got outside of the room, and opened up to the world, you start to see other characters that we had put in. So it was very um, community, kind of like they have their communities online, we support them. Right. And, um, you know, they did their thing. And they did their thing. I'm grateful for it because now the movie has these accolades and it's getting right. high, and we're in the process of getting it um, sold to a streamer. So um, hopefully it will be in people's homes and you can share with our journey and enjoy this movie, yeah. enjoy the roles that they played in the movie as well. I'm excited. I'm excited because I, <laughs> so, I know I can't play that role. 
I'm not giving it all, so I'm not even gonna try. But that is amazing. I put this, I put this comment here a few minutes ago because I didn't want to forget. Let me go back. I put I put this is why you have to keep yourself out there so people can find you. Because, like you said, this woman had you know, being on social media, she put herself out there and she was having like these different accents and things like that. Yes. And then that's how she was found. So yes. that's why whatever your gift is, whatever you're good at, whatever you like, you know, you got to keep yourself out there posting, keep yourself seen. And then just never know somebody Absolutely. like that will find you. And then Absolutely. that you may be on the, on a roll, like, you know, they have a producer, someone like you, cause you just never know who's watching you. And, yeah. you know, and that's how come you find. So let me, let me talk about being a producer. Like what is like the, thing that you do as a producer of you know a movie like Kofa y'all gotta make sure hey I'm Pastor Vicky y'all make sure y'all go to Kofa <laughs> y'all look up Kofa on YouTube y'all look at Kofa um because we're expecting it to be on what, what like a Netflix or Amazon type um stream yes, eventually so we yeah. are in talks our, our agents are in talks with them I know that's right. Yeah. Listen, streamers. Uh -huh. I don't know which ones we're gonna end up on, but you know, that's uh -huh. job to get us. So I'm, so I'm excited because that's that's what it's about. It's about you know us getting out there. So y'all remember this beautiful face here, and y'all about you know what? <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> y'all better remember. Y'all better hey. Y'all better follow her now because when y'all see her, when she's doing big things, because the I mean when y'all go on Kofa, when I seen some of those actors on Kofa, I was like, I remember him. I know him. He's always on you know those movies and stuff, and he's a great actor. I don't know his name, but I know you know who I'm probably talking about. So um, Antoine um um Antoinette Beck, thank you for coming in on Queen Mika. Thank y'all for coming in. Y'all make sure y'all ask questions. We gotta we gotta put a charge on this woman of God to get her out there. You ask her questions. So let's, hey, let's talk about being a director. What is, you know, some of the things that she does? So let's, I'm going to ask the question. So as a director, what is your job? Because it, it makes me think that when you are a director, that you direct, you kind of guide and tell them where to go. Am I right? Or what as a producer, do? I am a producer. I was okay, a producer, producer of this project. Okay. Yes, oh, wow. Side. So what, so what is your job as the, because a producer, that's even bigger. What, so what's the, what is your, <laughs> what is your I mean, cause that's big. Like what is your job? I got somebody who, who has a comment. So, um, yeah. Did you want to go ahead and read the comment first? Okay. Or yeah, you... I'll, I'll read it. But what is it about being a producer? Tell me more about being the producer. Sure. Sure. I could, I could do that. So, um, producers come in different forms and shapes and mm -hmm. different roles. So you have people who do, um, who get hired as a producer and come on a project and then they work uh -huh. on it. So I was fortunate enough that I was close enough to the shaping and forming of this particular project. Uh -huh. So it was written and directed by Judy Dada and also produced by uh, him as well as myself. Uh -huh. And the role and what I did from the very beginning was, first of all, you got to make sure there's money to make the film. Yes, so yes, yes, first, that part. first, you know, everything is a dream until you can materialize it or until oh. it manifests uh, physically. Uh -huh. And in our world, you do need money to right. get productions done. And in terms of when I say money, um, we're talking about from development, even from right. like get the research done, you get the script done, you want to talk to people, you want to hire line producers. And remember, I had talked about us hiring producers from Nigeria. So oh, my right. goal was to go there and be on ground. I wasn't on ground for the actual shooting of the film because when that time came, I had to come back to Canada and look for more money to be able right. to send back home to um, uh, mm -hmm. for them to continue the production. So my role was basically to work with the director, work with the other teams to kind of hire everybody um, make sure that we could afford the actors, their deals. We could afford to pay them what they were talking about. Come you make, on. Yes, you make the budget. Um, it was very important to create some sort of diversity in the roles because it's one thing to have all known cast, but it's also another thing to give upcoming actors a chance because this Ooh. young woman I was talking about, uh, Gina, she's very talented and the director really, want, really wanted to work with her. So we had to make that happen. Um, Come on. And when you finish the production, um, you have to work with people who do the editing. You have to work on the sound. You have to work on the actual cuts. Um, right. you have to figure out. So, so uh, a story when the film was done uh -huh. and the first set of edits were done and sent to me, it was about, uh -huh. it was over three hours. And I'm like, uh, and then the director kind of fell down. I was like, oh my God, I think this thing is blown, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no. Um, no. 
everything can, you can breathe life back into everything. Right. Take it from a different perspective. So I was, I started chopping and I started saying, take the cell, take the cell, take the cell. And then to talk with the director and say, um, because it's their baby, as much as it's their baby, it's also like something they've crafted and they're like, Mm. it's so hard to let go of certain things in it, but you have to let go. Not everything that you shoot makes it into the final cut into the yeah. final so you have to do all those negotiations so part of my role was to encourage that uh negotiation encourage the editing chopping yeah. things up that weren't adding value to the actual story uh-huh. and, and elevating and amplifying things that were adding more value to the production and then wow. hiring people for sound design um some of the sound designers and people who did sound were based in canada in toronto yes. so working with them here and then trying to sell the film that's oh, the big part because you're not going to be here you're not it's not you're not making it for just yourself and your friends to watch you want it right. you want the story out there so selling it is a big portion of that um and then getting it into festivals so it's one thing for it to have made it into africa which is the african international film festival that i talked about right. where so well so this is where black panther premiered in africa they had this yeah. big thing going on and in that festival, we ended up winning Best Feature Film. So it was like, oh, my God. It was amazing. We, we won Best Screenplay. We won for the Best Actor, the Come young man, Daniel Etim F. Young. Um, and then we were nominated for Audience Choice Award, Best Actress, and Best Director. So wow. it was, we got a lot of nods and a lot of accolades. We also won Best Trailer for the African Region at the World Trailer Awards in Portugal in February. Wow. So it's getting a lot of recognition. And as a producer, you have to leverage those accolades and try to get it sold. So I try to get an, I got an agent on board. So we're currently represented by CAA, which is the largest agency in the United States. And wow. I get them on board. Um, now we're talking to streamers through that agency. I'm not doing the talking because honestly, a, 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 little, a little tidbit you know, it's sometimes it's hard to sell. It's hard to blow your own trumpet. You need to have good people know. to sell for you. So that's right. their job. So they're hired to do that job for us. And then for me, I've been putting it into other festivals, you know, applying to other festivals, trying to get it done. So as a producer, really, you are there from the very beginning, from when the film gets written, um, or you option somebody's IP, which is buying the rights to a novel or a magazine or an article or a comic and Ooh. making it into an adaptation and then moving it into development, getting the story tighter, getting it into a writer's room, getting table reads. And then after that, you're getting it into um, rehearsals. You're hiring the cast. You're hiring other line producers, you're hiring editors, you're hiring costume, makeup and hair, wardrobe, um, you know, you're hiring um, special effects because there were special effects. You're you're hiring um, people who do, um, oh my God, the names just got off my head right now, but people who do stunts, you're hiring stunts, stunt coordinators, you're hiring all that kind of people. You're making sure everyone's happy. You're facilitating the creative process. And this is what I love to facilitate processes, to bring things from the roots, from the from the womb, to birth it. I love those processes. And that's why I found myself here at the end being a producer. So you were there at the beginning and you're the first one in and the last one out. So still the movies get to your screens. We are here fighting and working hard behind the scenes to make sure all that happens. And it's not as easy. You know, people think it's glamorous. They see you on the red carpet maybe, and they think, oh my God, it's such a glamorous job. Half the time you're looking like a bum sitting at your desk, working hard, um, right. trying to move, get all these moving pieces going. You yeah. know, you to make your investors happy. People who have invested into the film, you got to make sure to get their monies back. Yes. So invest again in the future. And oh. then you make other films. You don't burn bridges. You build relationships. You network. You know, I do a lot of traveling and networking. It's a lot. Like I'm oh. a little, now I'd mentioned to you back. That's like, I'm coming from Camp Film Festival. My voice is gone. I was so sick. It's a, it's a lot of grueling work. and But it's very rewarding because you are shaping society, you're impacting pop culture, you're okay. helping people start conversations around certain things, and um, you are manifesting something from 
nothing basically you take a story and you create a word around it with a team and uh -huh. you read it and people watch it enjoy it and hopefully it starts a discourse it starts them asking questions it starts right. them in their ways and impacting their societies so um that's the job of a producer really it's it's everything <laughs> I'm up here trying to find out how I can. Oh my goodness! I I found the trailer because we I was looking at the trailer and then okay. I was up here saying because the trailer was like really like intense and, <laughs> and I was like I got it I got it I got to be able to share this um share the trailer um I'm okay. just gonna share here so that we can so see make sure you stop it before it ends because there's a bit of profanity at the at the very end oh, so no. just live before it ends yeah. <laughs> See, I don't, but see, I gotta find out how to do because I don't know if I'm able to do it on here. But I do have, I do have a couple of questions here. I had a queen that came in here and she said, um, so Pastor Vicky, she said, everything is a dream until it manifested, until it's manifested. She also said, how important is it to have the right person for the role that is cast? How important mm -hmm. is it? That's real important. It is very important because. The whole thing about film, when you watch it, you want the audience to suspend their disbelief right. and enjoy the story and come into the world. So yes. if you don't have an actor who has the capacity to do that, right. who has the capacity to take off their regular hat as who they are and right. step into the role and put on the hat of that character, Ooh. if they cannot embody and bring to life what was written on the pages, you don't have a film. You just Ooh. have caricatures playing around on screen. You know, uh -huh. it's super important because sometimes you may not know that an actor is very good, but you will know when an actor is not very good oh, because yeah. they will not sell the story. You end up right. saying, sometimes you may not even know what it is. You're like, I'm not sure what it is. It well, could be a cast. You know, somebody who is in a role that they're not supposed to be in. Maybe right. they're very well known. You throw them into that role and then they yeah. don't translate. Um, so really, um, oh. back to Pastor Vicky's question, this is really, really key to sell the story, to help the audience to suspend their disbelief, because that's what you're doing. You're not yes. making the film so that people can watch it and 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 pick at everything and say, oh, I don't believe that, I don't believe that, I don't believe that. Right, you right, right. watch it and uh -huh. say, and that's why you can watch a film and cry. Why oh, you yes, yes. it's not real. I think but I can make it real. real. You hear me? I think I can make people cry. Let me <laughs> but it's real. It's real because they're oh. able to make you suspend your disbelief oh. that it's not real. But then they're making oh. you step into that world, feel the pain, feel, oh. the, emotion, feel the empathy. So if you don't have somebody that can do that, you Come can't on. get the audience to connect. The audience oh. can connect with what they're seeing. And human beings we are very, very advanced in the way our brains work. If right. something is not real, you can feel it. Right. right? You can right. totally feel it. But when something is not real, but someone right. has embodied it and transformed it and made it look really real to you, Come on. that is key. So that's really yes. why it's important to make sure that you're getting the right character who can embody, step into that the right actor who can step okay. into that character right and, right so yeah yeah, step yeah. Into your world for sure right right and then she okay because she's still commenting she had made another comment here let me mm -hmm. let me go back to it see okay where can okay where can casting calls be found for up and coming actors and actresses yeah so for the u.s it's very different and not that different in u.s and canada but you know, as actors, you need to be connected to casting directors because okay. most of the time it's not okay. the director themselves or the producer themselves that are going out and headhunting. No, okay. um, that's the job of a casting director. Oh. And sometimes when they make these calls and you as a director and as a producer, sometimes you sit in on these auditions, you sit in the room and you may make the final decision and say, this is working for me. Because remember, it's not just that they're acting or they're good. You have to be able to afford them. You have to be able to negotiate what they're getting. You have to be able to okay. make sure that they're going to be comfortable, that everything to make them, you have to empower them and create an environment for them to do their best work. So, right. um, but short answer to the casting call is really to keep your ears down, make sure you have an agent, your agent 
who's the agent for the actors will always know when there's a casting call. They always work, agents and managers are always working with casting directors. So whenever there's a casting call, they'll send you out to it. You wanna be serious. You wanna have your portfolio together. You okay. wanna have a reel together. Okay. Um, and and the, these reels and these things are things you can put together um, uh, professionally. Um, not just something you just shoot at home. That's great, but try to make sure that there is effort in there. Um, mm -hmm. When there is effort in there, um, the, the 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 team can see it. They can see you. Right. They can see you serious because hardly would a producer or director want to work with somebody who has no. I'm, I'm not even talking about experience. I'm talking okay. about professionalism. Now there's a difference, okay. right? Who has no professionalism because you don't want to deal with that on your sets. Got you. It costs a lot to deal with the wrong cast. It costs a lot to deal with the wrong person who wants to step into a role and doesn't understand the profession. So oh. cast and call, it's great to take courses, but it's also great to take professional courses to understand processes, understand oh. how casting calls, how auditions are made, understand when to say no to certain things. Yes. As a, you know, some actors have their limit. They wouldn't do certain things on screen. Right. They're not comfortable with it. You need to know who you are as an actor. You need to know where you can compromise, how right. you can direct your halfway, how when you say yes, your yes means yes throughout the shoot. So oh. that you don't cause problems on set. And because right. every hour on set is money. Money. That is where the bulk of money goes is during production. So you mm. can have the wrong people on set and things like that. So, but anyways, you know, have a professional reel done, have your portfolio ready. If possible, have a website, but you need to have an agent, have a have a, a PR person, if possible, mm -hmm. in right. most of what you've been doing. Right, right, right. When right. you do that, you know when these uh, calls are happening um, and you know what's happening in the industry. You know, right. hardly would you see a big studio announcing that there's a global open casting call for everybody to come in. Right. Um, hardly, because nobody wants to deal with an amateur not you know that doesn't understand the profession and things like that so yeah i have a question okay queen <laughs> will you be coming down this will you be coming to america will you be having someone you know you know you know like some someone like some of us you know cast a call and stuff like that will y'all become you know because i know y'all you know nigeria sometimes y'all may just say we want to stick right here you know we don't we're not going to come out do y'all do that kind of stuff? Do y'all? Oh, no, there's nothing like we're not going to come out. Look, we're in the age of collaboration. Yeah. We're in the age of where African Americans and uh, are asking questions about where they're from. They want to know their heritage. They want to become a part of their heritage. Okay. They know that Africa is the mother, is the is the mother continent, right? Right. They want to be a part of what we're doing. Like I was saying, one of the actors, Aina Wigwe, who was in uh, Kofa. Is also doing collaborations with the Hollywood and Hollywood production. Right. We do sometimes make out. In fact, the goal is to make out a casting call. I'm working right now. I'm creating a TV series. And in creating that TV series, I see myself working with Americans. I see Ooh. myself working with, yeah. <laughs> I see myself working with the hub of entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, and I would see myself working with casting directors there. When there is a role for Americans, of course, there will be a role for Canadians. You know, I'm based right, on right. I am Canadian. And then yes. there will be for Nigeria because I am big on telling stories that have African impact all around the world. So um, I want to see people like me. Like I was saying, you know, part of my goals and my vision in life is to close the gap in having black business producers, you know, mm. um, globally. So I want to yes. see our people prosper. I want to see um the exchange i'm here for the collaboration so there will always be that um i have a new company now that's called colo studios inc so c o l o studios inc there will be announcements there for certain things that we're doing you can catch our trailers there you can see the work that we're uh, starting with there um and when the time comes we will be partnering with other professionals in the u.s to make all this production no one is an island you can't uh -huh. in this day and age you really have to be collaborating. You really have to be building bridges and building bridges for people to cross over. You know, look at what has happened to Afrobeats music, right? Mm -hmm. It's just so ubiquitous now. And right. now we're trying to get Nollywood to 
become just as ubiquitous as it is. And so I'm big on collaboration. I'm here for that. I will be involving my African-American and American period brothers and sisters and people across the oceans, across both aisles to work together. We need that more than ever now in the Caribbean, in South America. We need that more than ever now because it's going to take that unified collaboration to make it happen for us as far as filmmaking goes, as far as crossing over in Hollywood, as far as bringing our stories out so that we're not constantly saying, oh, we don't have opportunities. We don't have a sit at a table in Hollywood. No, we're gonna build our own. We're gonna be able to build opportunities and create those opportunities. So definitely you will be seeing us, you will be seeing myself, you will okay. see the company come into the States to do uh, more collaborations for sure. Let me tell you, because we know you're gonna have, we're gonna have you, it's gonna be too much to now have you on a cover of MBQ magazine. So what I, yes, ma'am, you're gonna be on the cover of the magazine. But what I want to do is, is have a um have with um, men and women to get inside of our magazine that want to be filmed, you know, that want to have they have stories to tell that can be developed in, into movies. Yeah, and yeah. This is why. So this is why getting a magazine is good. We need to do a magazine call for short stories to possible movies. So that's what I'm gonna do. For, so that's probably what's, what I'm gonna have for your cover is for people because I I can think of like um um the Shanks because they do stuff like this. And so um I I'm, I I need to do something. I gotta come with some stuff. So that's what that's I'm gonna amazing. do. Yes, I'm that's telling you, you gotta be looking for some people that that are interested in you know movies and uh um. Uh, it's a biography, you know, different things like that, you know, because you just never know when you have your story out there, even like little short stories, and you say, "Oh, I can see that being a movie," you yeah. know. You know what I'm saying? Like even they don't, we don't understand our testimonies and the stories mm -hmm. that we're talking about our personal life, or just um something they say. Well, this is not this. They happen in real life, but this is something I want to tell a story about. This. I mean, you just never know. This is why it's good to be in magazines because you call it out. And so since you know, you know yeah. that's why you're on the show is because you're gonna be on the cover of NBQ magazine. Oh, but I want to do, I want to do like a little call, like you know, calling for movie uh actors and people like that that want to be in a movie. Tell you a story. You just never know when. When uh, uh, Okoye get it, you don't know. When Queen Okoye get it, you don't never know. She may see something about what your story and the magazine that she's on the cover of. She may just say, mm -mm, I need them. I need them. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this before we, before we get started, because I do want to talk about your new TV series. <laughs> I do want to, I do want to, I had a question I had put it because I don't want to forget. Okay. Um, uh, this is, okay, this is, let me go to it. Oh, how can, um, but I'll put that, I'll come to the end because I put how can we connect with you? So if we wanted okay. to get inside, if we wanted to be a part of one of your movies and, you know, um, and do a cast, you know, do, when y'all do a casting call, like how do we get to that place? So you, I'm listening, your PR have to connect with me. So whatever y'all are getting ready to do a casting call somewhere in Florida, y'all gonna have to let me know so I can be like, listen, and next <laughs> I listen because I want to. I want to definitely be a part of that and, and being able to get that stuff out there because there's so many people that want to get into film and things like that. And you know, I mean, it just it just so much. And the people who I'm talking about, they can help them train them and knowing the industry, like you said. So we're gonna have to talk about that. Um, you said, Lady um, Toya. Okay, where the spoon? Yes, we're gonna have to talk about that one. Okay. So the, um, she said in building bridges, um, she said um, um, building bridges to cross over Pastor Vicky. Good. Thank you, Pastor. She, she's awesome. Mm -hmm. Hub of entertainment. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. So let's talk about, um, so hey, um, Apostle, whenever we get a time, we're going to have to talk because we want to get people inside the magazine. So y'all got to let them know that NBQ Magazine is going to be coming forth and for okay. people to tell their story. So, you know, and she's going to be on the um, our producer right now of um, film producer that's here right now, Queen Okoye, you know, going to be looking inside and maybe somebody that she could say, I want their story. We can write a movie from their story. So we're going to be doing, so while she's on the cover, she's going to get the magazine and be reading our stories okay so I just never gonna make turn into a movie y'all better stop playing that's what i'm stop telling playing. you honestly <laughs> you're so right i uh -huh. come to so many places these days do you know that i heard recently that there was even from tweets when you tweet on twitter sometimes they can develop a story from a series of tweets. tweets 
I heard that recently and my mind was blown. And you know the beautiful thing about us and especially people from of African descent, we have something called oral tradition where we okay. tell stories of folklore. And I see that in African-American community. I see mm -hmm. that in the state period. And it's, it's influenced heavily from Africa wow. where you tell a lot of stories. You gather around, you share folklore, you just share, like we are just an epitome and just a, a, a factory of birthing loads of stories. Come and on. a lot of the stories have not been um, made into movies or even developed yes. into even books or comics or magazines mm. or art or whatever, and they need to be heard. So right. they're on top content. That's what I'm calling them. And that's why I said I'm on a mission to elevate those on top content in African stories. And when I say African stories, it's really all of us, right? So please share your stories. You just never know. We never get tired of looking at sources and right. looking at, you know, um, you know, of course, when it's solicited, when you look at sources and look at the story and say, okay, this would make a great film. This would make a great, sometimes it's even a play. This would make a great play. This would make a great this. This would make a great that. This would make a great TV series. This would make a great limited series. This would make a great documentary. So it comes in so many forms and, and shapes. And yeah, I'm always very happy to see them. Because you never know. I look at ourselves as vessels. And uh -huh. from, from the heavenlies, your vessel, and you just never know where that source is going to come from I'm for you to tell a story. So yeah. you have to be open. I'm always like, oh, God, direct me. Show me where these ideas are. Show me where these stories are. Show right. me what, it, what people need to hear, what people need to be talking about today. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I always, um, I'm always open to sources for uh -huh. ideas, inspiration. Period. Yeah. Period. I'm trying to tell you. I'm so I'm so excited. I'm cheesing from ear to ear. You see my little cheekbone. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, and I see it all. I see it all. <laughs> so I, am, I am just I am just too excited. I'm just excited about what what God is doing. So um I, I do want to talk about your new TV, your new TV right. series right. that's coming out. Mm -hmm. So the TV series is called The Third Coming. Oh, and wow. it's it's uh it's in, in development so i'm creating it i mean still that early development phase of creating it and then we're going to start that whole journey of hiring people hiring this getting it done getting it shopped around who knows where it's going to end up maybe your most popular uh streamers or whatnot but anyways it's called the third coming and it's basically asking the question what happens if and when the colonialists come to africa again to colonize africa again for the third time so Ooh. that's the question it's asking. So it's digging deep into those kinds of themes. So it talks about some of the spirituality in Africa, um, some of the mysticism there. It talk, it, it deals with technology because it's all about the metaverse and we're Ooh. moving to the metaverse and we're trying to yeah. get assets in the metaverse. And um, it's also talking about politics, you know, fighting against imperialism and colonialism. So it's basically mm -hmm. African spirituality meets politics meets technology. Uh -huh. So it's one of a kind. It's an African futuristic sci-fi drama. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything quite like it before. Yes. Um, I'm very, I was very grateful when the idea came to me. I was just like, oh my God. Oh my God. This is big. <laughs> At first, I wanted to do it into a small mini. I was like, no, this is big. And I've spoken to some other film producers. I was very, like, I was at Content London last year, and I was mm -hmm. speaking to a producer. You know, he's a BAFTA winner. He's an Oscar nominee. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me, no, this is a career project. You need to put in more. Don't make it into a small uh, production. Right. Take your time develop it, get the big funding, get a co-pro done. And I was like, okay, that's validation because I've been thinking about doing it big, doing yes. it with South Africa, with the US, with UK, with Canada, with Nigeria, coming together and doing this really big, big production that oh. I'm going to be happy to see coming from made by us, basically, that we can do this. So yeah. that's what I'm working on. It keeps me up at night. I'm grabbing inspiration from everywhere I can, watching yeah. documentaries, watching TV series, reading a lot, reading African futurism um, and things like that. So it's 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 an exciting one, and I'm very, very happy mm -hmm. about it. So it's going oh. to take a while, you know, probably a couple of years, but you heard it oh. here. 
This is the first places that y'all are here to talk. <laughs> yes, it is. And you can always come back later and be like, she spoke about it on this program. <laughs> Um, and here it is now. It's been birthday. It's been materialized. Oh. I cannot wait for that time to come. And I love mm -hmm. journeys. I love looking at journeys and saying, "This is where you started. This right. is this is this is that journey." And it's just yes. so for me. So I'm really looking forward to that. And oh I'm very goodness. for the opportunity to share that with you. Oh my goodness! I can't stop cheesing. So okay. <laughs> 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 so we've already talked about um what you're going to do with this so um, we don't have to talk no more about that and i could keep you on the show forever because i have been enjoying this interview and i want to tell you all all the guests thank you all for coming on thank you for all of your questions thank you for tuning in more than anything i want you all to understand the nubian queens magazine is coming out and we are going to be looking for people y'all need to pass this video on y'all need to pass it on y'all need to share this video and tell them so I'm really the reason why I'm passing this video and sharing this because you may be someone who like acting or you have a family member, a cousin, a sister, someone that believes in their acting. They want to get into that industry. You know, a captain call may come. Hey, you just never know. She's going to be on the cover of the magazine. So whenever you, you know, they tell the story and they get inside the magazine, there's a great possibility that she can read your story. Blessings, Queen Michelle. There's a great are possible that she can read your story, her and her, um, her, her team read your story. And I said, you know what? I can see this. You said being, um, being, a, um, not a biography, being, um, what did you call it? Um, it was something, um, a, um, you can do a series, a movie, yeah, it could be a, it could be a, documentary. a documentary. That's the word documentary. Yeah. So when you get inside the magazine and they read your story about a movie or, or a moment in your life where you're talking, you're telling your story, or it could be something that you may have had a dream about. You know, yeah. you just never know, you know what I'm saying? And you want to tell your, your dream and you want to make it into a movie. Oh my God, from Zion, I can feel myself. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. I just never know. We're talking to uh, uh, Queen Okoye, and if she's a, a film producer, y'all. And if y'all, y'all just never know that looking at this video and connecting with her, whenever y'all see her out scouting and things like that, I already told her she need to have her 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 PR need to connect me. She already got her cell phone number. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so whenever she's getting ready to look for a cast. You know, she has my number. You know, we're going to be in connection. And then I was just going to be on the cover of the magazine. So when y'all are put spread in this video, y'all tell them that y'all better take it serious. If y'all are interested in being an actor, things like that, you just never know where it's going to take you. You mm -hmm. know, uh, you know, are you, hey, you know, you may be a, a model or things like that. You may be, can sing or dance or whatever. You just never know where it can take you. So this is why it's good to get inside the, get inside the yeah. magazine because you just yeah. never know who's looking, who's watching. This is how come we put certain people on on the cover of the magazine because you just never know who's going to flip it open. You know what I'm saying? And read your story. But this one here with Queen Okoye is going to be different because mm -hmm. it may open up a possibility for a movie and for them to give you a call and say, how can I reach this woman? How can I reach this man? How can I reach this king? How can I reach this queen? So you just never know. Right. So y'all need to get yourselves ready. I will be coming out more with information with that with Queen Okoye. So y'all make sure y'all share this video. Make sure y'all go. Y'all be looking out for this movie, Kofa. K-O-F-A. Y'all yeah. need to be looking out for this movie. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Okay. I seen um I seen the trailer for this movie. I seen the trailer. That's said, I gotta go and watch this movie. So where can we go and watch this movie? So when the movie is out, we will announce it on okay, all gotcha. of the platforms. I am on Instagram at okay. Chibi, so T-H-E Chibi, C-H-I-B-I-E. So T-H-E-C-H-I-B-I-E. -E. Um, also, um, you can uh, follow me on Twitter on the same name at the Chibi. And my website is colostudiosinc.com. So C-O-L-O -O Studios, Inc, I-N-C.com. So um, we'll be making an announcement. I do share a few things on my story. I'm building my network. I'm building the people that are following my journey um, into film in, and, and um, hoping for the best. So yeah, you can definitely follow and all of that information would be available there once the movie is ready. I'm trying to tell you, so I'm super excited, but I was trying to go back on your, um, in your story. I 
because I'm seeing all your beautiful pictures. I was trying to go back on it so I can tell them about um what your face look. Okay, so it's Chib. Is it Chibi Louis yeah. Okoye? Okay, yes. so okay, so y'all go on Instagram, follow her, just in case she put some information out about you know maybe casting calls or different things like that. But y'all know, of course, when she get on cover NBQ magazine, she's gonna be having that on her page. Okay. 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 <laughs> so um. This has been a pleasure. So you all, I'm trying to see if I can um, share your, so they can follow you. Let me see if I can do this so they can follow you on Instagram. So let me see if I can share the link real quick okay, and, um, and get that out there. So they can see that. Let me see if they, if it went through. Okay. So it looks off. It looks funny, but whenever it's on, on Facebook. So this here will also be on Facebook and on YouTube. So Queen of Koya, you're done and you want to go back to your interview with me, you can always go on on YouTube and watch it on New Being Queen Talk Show. So okay. y'all, it's all wonderful. I'm so glad I can share that so that I would send it to my mom. She loves to see me. And oh, uh, yes, I'm, yes. I'm watching it. So I'm grateful that it would be available afterwards. So yes, shout mom. out to you, mom. <laughs> okay, I know that's right. Shout out to you, mom. Dickness, yes, J. Louis Okoye. <laughs> uh -uh. Give mama a call out again. Do it again. Do it again, queen. Shout out to you, mommy. Dickness, Uche Louis Okoye. <laughs> He's gonna have a small time with this one. <laughs> I am just, I am just dumb. We gotta, hey, you gotta give a shout out to the queen. I'm trying to tell you. So this yes. has been a whole blessing, and yeah, I want to, I want to tell my pastor, Pastor Vicky, thank you for being to tuning in, um, for this whole hour with us. We've had so much fun. I'm oh, so yes. excited about it. I thank you so much for allowing me to interview you and take up thank a you. whole hour of your time. But it's been a pleasurable hour, and so we shall talk and continue to. Stay Stay connected. I'll talk yeah. to you later, Queen. You have a great rest of the day, okay? Thank you so much. And yourself, yes, too. Thanks for having me. Yes, ma'am.